Bonjour. I don't remember much French. The only thing I remember is je m'appelle Chris, j'ai 13 ans. Um, but it's out of date now. I'm going to do live coding. I don't have slides. I think uh, I tested the font size. You should be able to read it. So let's do this. Um, I'll walk you through the app. We're going to make a to-do list. I'll um, try to build it and run it. And let's see if this works. I, rem I know that I'm keeping you from the beer. So this is like the last talk. So this is our app. It's a, a to-do list. And here you see all the lists. So there's a grocery list, a writing list. And what we want to do is, if you click on a list, if you tap on a list, I want to show the to-dos in it. Um, this feature is not there yet, so that's what we're going to build today. Um, so I'll walk you through the code, what we have so far, then we'll refactor it. And then once it's refactored, we can add the features. So first of all, we have this list struct. So this is basically the list you see on a screen, like a grocery list. And it has a name and an ID, a string and an int. And then I have this initializer. It's a convenience initializer that takes a dictionary, string to any object, a JSON dictionary, and it, it's an optional initializer. It might fail. Um, so that's why there's the question mark. And then what we do in the beginning is we say, get the name out of the JSON dictionary. And with the as, we try to cast it to a string, or we actually check if it's a string. And the same for the ID, but then we check if it's an integer. And then once we have these two, we just set the name and set the ID. If we don't have them, we return nil. So then the next step is the list URL. This is very simple, just a simple URL string. I know that it's going to work, so I can put the exclamation point there. And then we have the load list function. So this is the first thing we'll, we'll focus on when we refactor. So what does it do? Well, it gets the data synchronously from the network. Never do this in production code, but it doesn't matter for the demo. Uh, it's just a little bit simpler for the demo. So we get the data. Then we try to create a JSON object from it. And I use the try question mark, because in this case, for the demo, we're not really interested in the error. And then we take the lists, and we try to see if it's an array of dictionaries. So that's the line 22. We just try to cast it to an array of dictionaries. And then if that works, we flat map over the lists, and then we use this optional failable initializer. If any of these steps don't work, we return nil. So easy enough. Then we have a table view controller. And everybody should be very familiar with table view controllers, hopefully, if you write iOS code. So what it does, it's just a subclass of view. A table view controller, it has an items property. Then in the did set, we reload the data. What you would do in a real app is instead of reloading the data, you would compute a diff and then update the table view as needed. Um, this is just a simple sample app. And then in the view did load, we load the lists from the network synchronously. If the lists are not there, we use the empty list. And then we have our simple cell for road index path. So we load, we create a new cell. Normally, you would DQ and stuff. We create a new cell. We get the item out. Then we set the cell's text label text. And then we re return the cell. And then we have the number of rows in section where we return the, the, the number of items. So let's see. This is what it looks like. So it's simple. So what can we do? Well, my first problem is this load list functions. Function. It's short, but I really don't like it. Um, it's very hard to test. And I have to admit to you that I don't always write my tests. However, I write testable code. I find this very important. If code is easy to test, it's a good sign. So let's uh, take this load list function and make something like load to do's. Um, I'll just copy paste it um, as any good programmer. So we're going to call it load to do's. And now we have to do to do here. Well, we don't have this to do struct yet, so let's create that first. I'll comment this out, so just to make sure we always have working code. Well, it's very similar to the list struct, so we can create a to do struct. It has a title. Um, I know this because I practiced before. It has a list ID, which is an integer, and it has a done, which is a boolean. And then we can sort of take the same kind of optional initializer and add it to the to do. So I'll just copy paste this and edit it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to show a nicer way to do that. Um, but I'll just paste it in. And now here we check for the title. We put it in the title variable. We check for the list ID. And here we have already one difference. Like we, in the JSON, it's going to be list underscore ID. We want to have it with a capital. And we now also need to parse the done. So done is JSON done, and it needs to be a Boolean. 
Otherwise, we return nil. And now we just set the properties. So we say title is title. This is very ugly code, right? But we need to do it. And we set the done, Boolean. And now, hopefully, at least the compiler is happy. Um, build succeeded. I didn't run it. So OK, this is good. Now we need some kind of URL. So our application is structured like this. For the first list, or the list with ID 1, we can do something like this. So list slash 1 slash to do is adjacent. We'll make this a little bit nicer uh, afterwards. Now the load to do. So we can uncomment this. So we changed the type here already. Here we need to to do URL. And here we need to use to do that in it. So I'll call this one to do URL. And hopefully the compiler is happy. What I'm going to do is just print the to do's um, in the application that finished launching with options. So we're just going to print load to do's just to make sure that it's working. Build succeeded, so that's good. And hopefully at the bottom, yes, here we have a nice list of to do's. So this is exactly what we wanted. And the only thing is it always loads the to do's for <coughs> list number one. So we can also fix that. So instead of having this URL, we could make it a function. We'll do that in a bit. OK. This load to do's and this load list, is, they are very, very similar. So we change the types, and we change the URL, and we change the initializer. And what we can do in Swift is really nice. We can pull that out into parameters. So let's try to do that. So what I want to do is, instead of parsing it to do, I want to load A, any kind of A. And in Swift, the way to say any kind of A is just to use a generic parameter. And this is how you do that. So now load to do's says, well, for any A, I will try to load you um, an array of A's. And instead of calling it to do's, let's call it resource. So we're going to load some resource from the network. OK, so now instead of this to do's URL, we need some kind of URL. And instead of this flat map to do that in it, we need something to parse the to do's. Well, I'll just call it parse. OK, now we, need, we have two errors, and we need to fix them. So the first thing is the URL. This is an NS URL, so that's the easy part. The second thing is this parse function. So if we think about it, what does it do? It takes a dictionary, a JSON dictionary, and it produces some kind of A. And uh, maybe it fails. So let's write it down. So parse takes a dictionary from string to any object. And it produces some kind of A. And maybe it fails. So let's see. It looks like the compiler is happy. At the bottom, there is a little bit of red. So now we can say load resource. And we pass in the to do's URL. And here we say to do that in it. And let's see if this still compiles. It runs, so that's a good thing. And it still parsed the to-dos. You can see it in the bottom. So this also allows us to rewrite our other function, um, load lists. We can now use this load resource. So let's do that. We can say something like this, load resource. And then we use the lists URL, and we say list that in it. And hopefully, it still works. Build failed. Um, and we need to return it, of course. So this is a bit nicer. Our load lists function is much simpler. You can look at it. It just is one call. So it's much easier to see what's happening here, except we didn't solve the original problem. This code is still very hard to test. If we want to test load lists, we have to bring up a networking stack. Uh, we have to test that the data is loaded from the network, that the JSON is parsed, that the JSON is actually constructed into a list. So it's very complicated to test. So let's see what we can do. There's one really nice trick, which I sometimes do, and sometimes magic happens. And in this case, it does. So what you can do sometimes, if you have a function, you can take the parameters and put them into a struct, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to take these parameters of load resource and put them into a struct resource. So let's create the struct resource. And I'll paste the parameters back in and delete this comma and say let parse. So this resource, it has a generic parameter, A. And again, just like functions, this is how you do that. And now in the load resource, we also have to say resource of A. 
and instead of the URL, we have to fetch the URL out of the resource. So it looks like we're making things more complicated. Believe me, things will be simpler in a little bit. So now we can say resource URL, resource parse. This part works. Here, this code will become a little bit more complicated. So now we need to say resource and put in the list URL and put in the list.init. So we add some more parentheses, everything looks fine. Now at the bottom we also need to change this one. And here we say resource, to do's URL, and to do that in it. And close all the parentheses. So it's it's now a little bit more complicated. Let's see if it still works, just making sure we don't have tests. Um, it still works. It displays the lists. The re, the um, to do's are parsed. And what we can now do is really cool, is we can take this part and put it into a variable. So we call this one to do's resource. So let's go back up and create this to do's resource. Um, and just like this. And we can do the same for the lists. So we can take this part, which is just really loading, of describing how the lists are loaded, and we call it lists resource. And we can put it in here, that list resource. And this is really cool. This list resource is very, very easy to test. It's very domain specific. This to-do's resource is also very easy to test. And the load resource function, we only need to test it once. We don't need to test it for all the possible combinations. We can just test this asynchronous function once and we don't have this asynchronous testing all through our code. So let's hope this still works. Build succeeded, everything is fine, it still works, so that's cool. Um, now this load lists function, we don't really need it anymore, so let's just delete it. And instead, here we can say, inside our table view controller, we can load the resource, list resource, and everything still works. So we remove some code, this is nice. Things are more generic and simpler. And what we can do now is also um, make this table view controller a bit more generic. So if we want to actually display these to-dos, we have to do something. So we, can, we know that we could copy-paste the code, that's what we did before, but now we also know we can use generics. So let's do that. Um, instead of a table view controller, it's just going to be a generic table view controller over A. And now instead of storing lists, it's going to store arrays of A's. And now this becomes a little bit problematic. We need some kind of resource, so let's just call it resource. And we can introduce a parameter here, resource of A. And now here is another part where we configure the cell. I'm just gonna take that out and call the method configure cell. And it's gonna configure the cell um, with the cell and the item. So it's gonna call that function. So this function we also need to provide. And again, we can use the same trick. So we can say configure cell is a function that takes a UI table view cell and some kind of A and then configures it. So this configure cell, this, the, the view controller is now happy. We need to also create an initializer. So let's do that. So we can create an initializer which takes a resource of A and it takes a configure cell function which again takes a UI table view cell and an A and configures it. And then we just assign those two properties so we just store them off, and we also assign the configure cell, and now we need to call, call our super initializer, um, and we just use the plain style. So if we scroll down, we'll see that here, our my, my table view controller, we now need to initialize it. So instead of this initializer, we need to use the other one. Let's see if we get auto completion. We get the lists resource, and then the configure cell is a function given which is given a cell and a list, and now I will paste the code back in that we had before. So we called it item here. And ho let's hope that it still compiles and runs. Okay, build succeeded, it's exciting. It still works, so that's pretty cool. Our table view controller is now generic. It doesn't know anything about lists anymore. And now we can also make it work on um, to-dos. Before we do the to-dos, I wanna quickly wrap this into a function. 
So I'm going to refactor a little bit. I'm going to take this URL and put it in the resource. And we can now get rid of this variable. And I'm going to make a function to do res to do's resource. So we can call it func to do's resource. And it's going to take a list ID, which is an integer. And then it's going to return a resource of to do. And this function just returns that resource. So I'll paste that back in. And instead of the one, we can now use this list ID. So now we can delete this one and say list ID. And now we can get it to do resource for a specific list. So let's see if this still works. If I do to do resource two, hopefully we get a different list printed out. Yes, so now we have a very short list in our, short list in our console. Okay, cool. So let's do the last part, and then hopefully we'll end up with something nice. So we want to do this did select row at index path. Um, I already wrote a little bit. So in the did select row at index path, we fetch the item out of the array, and then we need to call some kind of callback. So we can call did select, and we just pass the item in. And now this did select, we need to create it, of course. So here we can create some kind of did select function that, given an A, does something. And let's just provide a default implementation that does nothing. Um, so we don't have to specify it. What we can do here in our view controller, we can set this did select property, and now we get a list in, and we can maybe print it. So let's print it. Hopefully it works. I can click on groceries. Oh yeah, it logged it. So now we have a print line statement. And instead of printing it, we could also push another view controller and create it, so let's do that. Um, we create a to-dos view controller, and it's a new, it's the same, my table view controller, and then we can say uh, to-dos resource for list.id. So we get this list in, sorry, I had to make a, I made a typo, and then inside the configure cell, we can configure our table view cell, so we get the cell in, and we get the to-do in, and then we can say, for example, set the text label, to the to-do's title, and we can maybe do it a little bit fancier and say the accessory type. If the to-do is done, then we use the check mark. Otherwise, we just use nothing. So we create the to-do's VC. We need to push it to do the to-do's VC, and then we animate it, of course. We can run it. Build succeeded. So we get our list, and now hopefully something happens. Ooh, we got our to-dos. So this is pretty cool. <laughs> so I'll just very quickly take this code and pull it out so you can see how much code we really have that's app-specific. So I'll just create a function app, and I'll create it here uh, under our list resource, func app, and it's going to return a UI navigation controller. Um, so that was the code that was in the app delegate. We're going to return it. We're going to take this uh, load resource. We're going to leave it. And my table view is fine. Um, and we're going to take this resource out and move it a little bit down. Just so you can see that if we scroll down, we have the list, we have the to-do, the two initializers, we have our URL, the resource, the list resource, and the app. So this comes in at 56 lines. And then the rest of the code, the resource, the load resource, the my table view controller, it's all generic. It's all framework code that you can use over and over again. And you can make them nicer and improve them and make them asynchronous, make the table view smarter. And all of your views will benefit from this. So you can see that in 56 lines, we wrote an app with two different view controllers without having to subclass too much. Um, and we can easily add more to this. So I hope to inspire you to do the same things with your networking code, or maybe with even different code, like view controllers, or completely different frameworks. And I'm now um, done through my code, and I'm very happy to take any questions from Daniel. Thank you.